What does high score mean? New high score, is that bad? What does that mean? Does I break it? Hello everyone and welcome to Veteran Gaming, I am Aaron. Today in Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle Earth, we're going to be talking about the newest legendary hero that is coming to the game. And I am of course talking about Thorin Oakenshield, the leader of Thorin's company and the liberator of Erebor. Really great character in the books and in the movies. Going to be a very popular hero coming to the game. So my guild has been asking me all day my thoughts on Thorin and I'm finally home from work so I can actually get this information out. Now, obviously, we don't have all of the information yet. We don't really know how the team is going to run yet, because as you can see on the screen, he's going to be best with Bomber and Bilbo Baggins, who aren't even in the game yet. So we're going to make some speculations of how the game or of how Thorn is going to work. And we're going to take a look at who's currently in the game. And we're going to take some good, educated guesses on how good Thorin is going to be. The very first thing I want to mention is how we get Thorin, and that is, of course, by using goblins and wargs. Wargs who aren't even in the game, and goblins who nobody but me apparently has been farming since the game released. I've been farming goblins for no reason. No reason whatsoever. The great goblin, the leader, arguably the most important, isn't even farmable inside of the game other than gems, which is the least efficient way to use your gems. So I've been farming uh, these goblins. I have them at six and seven stars with no justification other than my own crazy inner workings. But now... Totally justified. Totally justified because I should be able to, as long as they come out with some kind of farming path or packs for the Great Goblin, be able to unlock Thorin Oaken Shield at the release, which is going to be amazing. So you're using goblins and our wargs, which are not currently in the game. So it's nice that later on down the road, you're going to have another option to farm other than just goblins, depending on how deep the warg team gets. Uh, another thing I want to mention, I know that some people are like, why on earth are goblins and wargs, shadow creatures, used to unlock Thorn Oakenshield, a light side dwarf leader? And this is kind of uh, one of CG's strategies. If you're familiar with Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, uh, you use Separatists to unlock Padme. You use Rebels to unlock Emperor Palpatine. You use Bounty Hunters to unlock Chewbacca. They make you build one team to unlock a legendary that has nothing to do with that team, which is kind of like business of 101. And I know it's frustrating, but you have to keep into your mind, hey, I'm also building another team. I'm going to use the goblins or the wargs down the road. So it's a little frustrating that you're not like, you know, Elrond. He, you take elves to get Elrond. He immediately slots into the elves team and makes them better. You're not going to have that option with Thorin, which is a bit of a bummer. But that's very common with the way CG runs their business. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about his kit a little bit. So I've, I've heard some people saying his kit doesn't look that great, uh, which I kind of understand where they're coming from, especially if you don't have a lot of experience uh, with this style of game or with the way Capital Games runs their games. But I want to point out a couple of things that I think are really, really key. Here on his uh, first attack, we're not really talking about anything that important. Damage and a weekend, but it's a first attack, so nobody's surprised on that. Here's where it starts to get a little bit more important on his second ability. At max upgrade, it's going to inflict marked for two turns and attack the enemy for damage. And inflict daze, which daze is awesome, right? Daze is very, very good. But that marked is going to be really, really important because of his overwhelmed ability. So his next ability at max upgrade... You're going to put on Overwhelm stacks on the target, which when they're marked, as long as they don't have crazy dispels, that mark is going to stay on. So you're going to Overwhelm that target quickly, hopefully. You're going to put Overwhelmed on the target, do a bunch of damage, and this is where it gets really key. On kill, you're going to gain two stamina for this ability, inflict marked for one turn on the most wounded enemy, and reduce their turn meter by 100%. So you're going to kill somebody, you're immediately going to mark and transition to the next wounded, and then you're going to reduce their turn meter by 100%. So you can see this is, this is really, really important. Any hero that has turn meter manipulation built into the kit is a really important hero. And the fact that you're going to be able to like waterfall through one, through the one, through the one, and get through that other team is really, really important. His passive here at max upgrade... Whenever the character uses his ability, grant one stack of assistance to a Thorns Company ally. When an enemy with Overwhelmed is attacked, gain 10% turn meter. Again, 
turn meter manipulation, the most important aspect in this game. So there's really never going to be a bad hero in this game that has turn meter manipulation built into the kit, whether it's reducing enemy turn meter or boosting your own team's turn meters. And here's the leader ability, the stubbornness of dwarves. And again, you can already see here, turn meter is in the kit. If the target enemy has marked, they cannot evade or block, which is going to help build the overwhelm stacks. Remove all stacks of overwhelmed when another target enemy is attacked, which is a bummer, but you have that marked on, which is going to help. When an enemy with overwhelm dies, Thorin's company whole squad gains 10% turn meter and heal for 10% max health. So the way I see this working is you get Thorin's company up and running. You mark one of the targets. Everybody starts pounding away on that target. You kill that target. You immediately mark the next one. Your turn meter increases and you immediately start launching hits onto the next one that can start burning him down, move to the next one. So what I think is going to be the most important part of getting Thorin and his team up and running is getting Thorin to be very, very fast. So if we look here, obviously best with Bomber, Bilbo Baggins. If we jump over to the game real quick, we can see that the other current members of Thorin's company, a couple other dwarves here. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Okay. Feely, Biffer, and Keely. So Biffer is actually a leader. So he is the first one that immediately jumps out to me as being part of a separate team, probably an all dwarf team. Maybe throw him in with like Gimli or Legolas. Uh, I don't really know how that's going to play out yet, but Feely and Killy have synergy specific to the two of them, so you want to keep them together a lot like uh, Merry and Pippin. So if you're going to run Bilbo, Bomber, Philly, Killy, and Thorin at the time, I think that's going to be a pretty solid combo. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is, here we go, here's our stats, get our speed up here. So we don't exactly have blazing fast dwarves as you can imagine. As we drop down here, I mean, Feely is way down there. Killy is way down there. Biffer is way down there. So we don't know. We assume Bilbo is going to be lightning fast because the Hobbit and most Hobbits are lightning fast. Bomber has got to be one of the slowest heroes in the game. That is a large character uh, if he's anything like the size he was in the movies. So you're going to have a slow team for the most part. We don't know how fast Thorin is. I'm kind of assuming he's going to be, as a legendary hero, kind of up here in the Faramir and Niramiri range. But I, I don't really know. Uh, where's Elrond? How fast is Elrond? Elrond isn't that fast. Yeah, Lord Elrond's all the way down here. So just because he's a legendary doesn't mean he's going to be stats uh, through the roof. So he might be also pretty slow down here in between Feely and Keely or something. If that's true, getting their speed up through the glyphs that are coming into the game is going to be wildly important because if this team doesn't get the marked and the overwhelmed stacks started with Thorin, you're never going to get started, especially if he's disabled or something through the other attacks. So it's, it's really, really important to have their speed through the roof at this point. Again, I'm kind of making some, uh, some guesses, some educated guesses here, because we don't have all the information from Bombor and Bilbo Baggins yet. But I'm kind of assuming when he is first released, you're going to be running him Feely, Keely, Bomber, and Bilbo if you can. And then if Thorin gets started, they're going to have the opportunity to do a lot of damage, especially with good old Keely here. Because he's got some crazy good stuff here. In his uh, third attack, he's going to inflict bleed. But he's also going to get up to uh, one additional stack of bleed per boon on the target. Which is, which is big. I mean, if you're hitting with three stacks of bleed plus doing damage. You're getting the assistance through Thorin. I think there's a really good chance here that they are pumping out some serious damage. Once they get fully up and running. So... Although I'm not entirely sold yet on Thorin being, you know, a world beater, taking out Lord Elrond, no problem. I do think it's going to be really, really important because he has that turn meter manipulation multiple places in the game. And actually, as I just scrolled right here, I just saw what here. Make sure Thorin has enough focus and speed from glyphs to ensure he inflicts marked consistently. 
if he's fast and he gets that marked out quickly and all the other dwarves start coming in, I really don't see... If this team gets started, I don't know how they can be stopped. Let's put it that way. Unless you have somebody built in with, like, when the other team's gaining turn meter, they gain turn meter or some kind of crazy dispel. I don't know. I don't know how you're going to beat that other than get them down before they can get started. So we'll see how it all goes. Hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully you've been farming goblins very randomly like I have, and you're going to be able to unlock Thorin quickly. So we'll see how it goes. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, any kind of speculation on his kit or how the team is going to run, make sure you leave it in the comments section down below. If you enjoy the video, please give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss upcoming content. And as always, have fun. Good luck. So I got that going for me, which is nice.